Hello everybody, welcome to this cool things from PTS that I've added to the channel. Um, one of the things that is coming out is the Blackwood chapter, and this is going to be interesting. There's going to be some cool things that, um, that are going to be situated, uh, but I'm just going to touch on a couple of topics. We have a new trial, we have trial sets, companions, overlands, antiquities, new monster masks, and then just random things that I'm going to point out. Um, at the end, I will also talk about a couple of things that I also saw and just some stuff that I've heard from people like Nefax, Cyanide, and other places. So with this new trial, Rock, Rock Grove trial, you have stone talkers from the Ka Usits tribe have watched over Rock Grove Samirs for centuries. Although the stone stays silent, the chaos rolling beneath, it could erupt at any moment. A sect of a rival tribe, the Sulzan, has invaded Rock Grove and is preparing to sacrifice the inhabitants to fuel some dark ritual. So this is a 12-player trial located in the southern portion of Blackwood and includes a normal and a vet version with hard modes. So there are unique item sets of the trial, uh, perfected sets obviously found in vet, and then there's unique achievements for completing the trial. So there's a body marking, a mount, several titles, and unique housing items. The trial sets, this is one of the trial sets, is Vasi's Mania. The two piece is 129 spell damage, three piece minor slayer, and four piece spell crit five piece there is a perfected only so you have two five piece bonuses but one is only for perfected only which adds 129 spell damage and then the next one which can be available on the regular piece increases your damage done to a non-player enemies by up to 15 percent based on your missing magicka at first i don't know what the hell is Cinemax trying to do with this set? But um, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Um, I get to be honest, I really I really don't know. I really don't know what you can do to make this a viable set. So we're just gonna move on. Um, you have Stone Talker's Oath. This is a light set. This is also one of these sets that a lot of people are talking about having the tanks wear. So if we're going to have the tanks wear the set, then they're going to have to be in jewelry and sword and board and staff. So the set, the two piece mag recov, minor Aegis is the three piece, four piece 129 magicka recov, perfected adds 1096 max magicka. And then the regular five piece bonus is your fully charged heavy attacks Place a soul bomb on your target that charges and the target takes damage. After 10 seconds, the bomb explodes, restores 5% of the damage received as stamina and magicka, up to 2240 stamina and magicka to 12 group members within 60 meters of the explosion. This can occur every 10 seconds. This is huge. This is magicka and stamina sustain. Now, stamina is pretty much dead this coming patch. Um, in order for it not to be dead, it'll be like places like VSS where you can actually have, um, you know, prepare the group all together comp to just do stamina. And I mean, this could be a nice thing for that too. But um, the 2240 Magicka return for up to 12 members every 10 seconds, you're getting that from a heavy attack um, by the tank. That's that's pretty huge. So this is going to be a cool set to watch, for sure. The next set is a medium set, Sulzon's Torment. It adds weapon damage, minor slayer, weapon crit, and the perfected all adds another set of weapon crit. The regular piece, when an enemy you recently damaged dies, they leave behind a vengeful soul for six seconds. You can only create one soul at a time. Touching the soul increases your weapon crit, by 2160 and your crit damage by 12% for 30 seconds. Um, I don't, I'm not much of a stamp person, but this 
might not be a bad thing to have in a ball group in PvP. Because, I mean, yeah, the, the Miner Slayer is, is rough. But, um, I mean, this is not a bad thing to have. The, the good part is you could use this in trash fights for, um, you know, for just regular trials. If you have a spam character there. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically what I could see. Um, this might be a good PvP set. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll leave that to you guys. Then we have the Sax Sax Leo Champion. This is 1096 Max Mag, Minor Ages, Max Stam, Max Stam. When you cast an ultimate ability, you new up to 11 group members within 28 meters of you gain major force for 21 seconds, increasing your crit damage done by 20%. Now, I could see people putting this one on a tank as well because of the minor ages. Um, but a lot of people have been saying that this is going to be a buff healer set. There's talks about putting this instead of um, Roaring Opportunist on the Templar healer or whichever healer is doing RO gerbils. There's there's talks about that. Um, obviously, those talks are interesting, but uh, I mean, there's talks about it. Uh, eh, I can see it both ways. All right, so now we're going up to companions. In order to acquire companions, you have to have the Blackwood chapter. So if you have not unlocked that, make sure you have that taken care of before you start on your questing for companions. You have to do it in the back Blackwood zone. And he Bastion is found in Deep Scorn Hollow, is the southwest coast of Blackwood, and Miri is found in Doom Vault Vulpinex objective in North Blackwood. So one is in the southwest, one is in the north. In population limited instances such, such as dungeons, group arenas, and trials, each companion present counts towards the population cap as if they were a player. This is huge because not only is this going to stop companions from going in the trials, which was one of the biggest problems that I had because I'm like, that's going to lag the freaking trial like a mess but i mean if you have just eight people in your trial and you know four of you want to bring out your companion to make it up to 12 then that's not a bad thing to do you know you can do a normal trial with eight people most of the time so it's not bad to just you know like if if you can't find anybody you can just put somebody's companion out there to take the last spot so this is something cool for the casual players to do if um, you know, they just don't want to do a certain dungeon or a uh, trial with other people. And they want to have something that does a little bit of DPS. Um, because we have been told that this companion is not just like a regular player. They're stupid, but they're a placeholder. It's a placeholder, folks. It's literally a placeholder. So in dungeons, if you take out your companion, then you're not going to be able to get that other player. Now, if you have a group queue and once that other player comes in, the companion is going to automatically disappear. So the players will always take priority and the companions will be auto dismissed as players zone in which is pretty nice. So if you start a trial or a dungeon with your companion, um, or somebody leaves a trial or a dungeon until you get that other, you know, player back, then you can have a companion there by your side. Obviously, they cannot be summoned in PvP areas, solo arenas, or in housing instances. They cannot be summoned while you're in combat, or if the summoning character has not yet completed the intro quest. So even if you've unlocked um, the the companion and another character you have to unlock in every single character. One other thing is if the relationship between you and your companion gets to a really bad state, that companion is going to say, holla holla, I'm not going to come and fight with you. So make sure you keep 
those relationships in a good um, thing. Now, the companion visibility is also going to be suppressed in some situations when you you know they're not unable to navigate to your character, such as you know swimming when you're swimming. Um, the combat level on the companions they start at level one when they're unlocked. They have really limited bar slots and abilities and a maximum potential level of 20. So the level 20 companion is the max you can get. Now, they're going to level up the experience with you from combat. And experience increasing effects such as holiday bonuses and such will provide an indirect benefit to the companion as well. So, eh, that's will be pretty nice to have your companion during the next holiday event when there's XP. So you can, you know, gain some levels. Um, now, as the companion gain combat levels, their health and overall power obviously is going to affect uh, their buffs and such. And it's going to increase automatically, and you're going to be able to unlock class abilities and ultimate slots and all sorts of things. Now, on the skill lines, the companions have access to several skill lines. Obviously, most of the companions have three active abilities, which can be acquired through leveling up on that skill lines. They do not require skill points to unlock, and then they do not rank up or morph over time. So if you're going to put inner light on your companion, it's not going to morph. Um, <clears throat> same with um, silver leash or stuff like that. Class skills uh, increases with the combat level of the companion, obviously. Weapon skill lines with the combat experience. Skill, skill lines through completing specific solo daily quests and racial skill lines. Um, do not include active abilities are just applied based on the race of the companion. So obviously one is an Argonian, so they're going to have Argonian skill lines. Um, each companion unlocked with some progress skills um, in their, you know, in their background as well. So equipment and sourcing. Companion equipment is distinct from player gear. There's gonna not going to be any overlap between them. Um, you're going to get um, your companion gear to unlock with a set of untraded white equipment based on their background. Like Bastion's going to be wearing art medium armor and a duster staff, and Miri starts off with light armor and a bow. Why medium armor or an industrial staff when Miri's with light armor and a bow? That I do not understand. Um, medium armor, I would think you would have the bow, and then Mary would have the Destral Staff. Who the hell knows? Um, <clears throat> now, the companion equipment does not include level. It cannot be enchanted, does not require repairs, and you do not change the style appearance. It inherits the companion's style. So if you have Mary, she's going to be in an Argonian. She's going to look Argonian. If you have Bastion, then obviously, you know, it's going to be different. Now, what companion equipment can be purchased from woodworkers, blah, 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 blah. So you can customize your companion role accordingly. Now, here's the kicker. Find superior and epic quality companion equipment with traits are obtained from monster drops throughout the world, particularly from bosses. And this equipment can be traded so it can be bought and sold on the market. That means that welcome companion gear to the guild traders and to zone chat and all the hoopla. So that's pretty nice. Now, perks. Each companion has a unique perk which benefits you while active. So Mary's I found to be the best perk ever because you have treasure chests found through treasure maps and in the overland have a 30% chance to provide additional loot from hidden compartments. The treasure from these hidden compartments may contain additional gold, syllables, or recipes. This is huge because if you have that treasure hunter passive, this is going to give you a more of a boost. Now, Bastion's Insight, potions looted from chests and monsters have a 30% chance to be improved by Bastion's Insight. I'm not too sure what that means right now, but I guess I will figure that out in PTS. Now, these are the Overland sets. <clears throat> we have, um, I'm not sure which one this is, but this is the light set. I'm sorry, I thought I'd put it on here. It adds 129 spell damage, 6 uh, spell crit, spell damage, 
increases your damage done with frost abilities by 6%, and increases your damage done against chilled enemies by 4%. Increases your damage done against enemies afflicted with minor brittle. So if you have a Magdan in your group that is doing brittle, this can be a decent set for them to wear as well. Um, this is also a set that if you have a tank doing brittle, they can wear. And if you have a healer doing brittle, they can wear too. Now, obviously there's better sets, but I'm just saying like, as you guys have EC with the crow, this can be a set that can kind of do something like that. We have Deadlands Assassins. This is the medium set. We have two and three on the weapon damage. So we have two things of weapon damage. Four has max stam. Five has weapon damage. And then dealing damage to an enemy within 10 meters of you with a heavy attack causes you to throw a cone of knives, dealing physical damage to enemies hit. If an enemy is hit, has 50% health or less, they also take additional bleed damage over 13 seconds, and it's going to scale off of the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So this is pretty cool for PvP land. Um, that's kind of what I expected on that set. Maybe PvP set. This is a heavy set. It adds max mag, max health, max stam. When an enemy you have recently damaged dies, you gain 10 ulti and you increase your health recovery. Um, this can occur every 10 seconds. Ah, uh, meh, it's okay. It's a nice set, but I don't think it's going to change anything that's out there right now. I think there's better sets um, that can do this right now, so eh, meh. Now, this is the crafted set. His Whisper is going to provide health, stamina, and magicka recovery. When you're dealing a light or medium attack, um, it's going to heal you for 318 health and restore stamina and magicka. Dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack heals you for 636 and restores 636 stam and mag. I could see this being on a tank in PvP, like on these tank builds in PvP. That's what I see this in. Um, as far as the medium... Um, or another overland set, I'm sorry, is Heartland Conqueror. You have weapon and spell damage, max mag, max stam, and then this increases the effectiveness of your effectiveness of your weapon traits by 100%. Obviously, this does not affect ornate or intricate traits. So there you go. Then you have Diamonds Victory. Adds 129 weapon and spell damage, crit chance, weapon and spell damage again. Dealing a direct melee damage grants you range supremacy for five seconds, adds weapon and spell damage to your damage over time, and range attacks. And then dealing direct range attack grants you melee supremacy, adding 437 weapon and spell damage to your melee attacks. This is pretty interesting. Um, I could see this set coming out and doing something. Um, so that one plus the, um, the one that gives you all the health recovery and such. I can see those two sets doing some work. So now we go to antiquities. We have a heavy head that is going to be an antiquity gaze of Sithis. It has 5,000 max health, 500 health recovery, it has armor, and then reduces your block mitigation to zero. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is a good set. I'm not going to say it isn't. It's just this in the head. Um, but hey, you know, it might, it might get something out there. So we have medium legs, dealing direct damage, grants you a stack of Hunter's Focus for one minute. You have up to 10 stacks max. You can only gain one stack per second, and each stack increases your crit chance by 119 and your crit damage by 2%. Taking direct damage removes one stack of Hunter's Focus. So, <laughs> okay. Um... I'll have to see how this actually works, because that's just a bunch of gibberish right now. So we have the Death Dealer's Feet Ring. This gains a persistent stack of escalating feet every two seconds. Um, each stack increases your max stam, health, and magic by 150, and then you lose the stack of uh, feet every four seconds. You're out of combat. I can see this being pretty decent when you get into combat. 
um you know every two seconds like this might not be a bad idea for like a tank in pvp or in battlegrounds um just to keep having these stacks because you're gaining you know you're gaining max spam health and magicka um like pretty much every two seconds so oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Shapeshifters change. This is a necklace. Reduces cost of your transformation ultimate abilities by 15%. While transform increases your max health stam and magic by 12, 16. So if you are a vampire or a werewolf, this is actually something that you can use. Um, you know, it's going to reduce your ultimate and it's going to, you know, while your transform is going to get you pretty nice bonuses right there in all categories so that's that's pretty good you could actually go whichever way now one thing is there's going to be new antiquities obviously found in blackwood um there's going to be a new motif the ancestral activity um i've seen pictures of it is pretty nice that's going to be a pretty nice uh, motif to get obviously you're gonna have to excavate stuff to get it most likely um, there's going to be a new outfit style page, the light funerary mask. There's going to be three new furnishings, the tidal canoe, sense idol, and the tapestry. And then there's going to be a new map furnishing, the Ectite map of Blackwood. Uh, and then there's going to be three new sellable antiquities. That's interesting because we've never been able to sell antiquities before. And now we're going to be able to. That's pretty awesome. Now, in this new update, They've added three new monster masks that are located in Imperial City, and they drop from their respective monsters and from um, from the trophy vault chest in their district. The shoulders can be purchased from the Telvar merchant, either in their own individual box or in a cheaper, fully randomized box. So the Telvar merchants are going to be kind of acting like the pledge merchants uh, as far as the monster, the, the shoulders, I guess. Yeah, the shoulders. Um, the first is Soul, the Ever Wakeful. You get max stam. When you break free, you release a wave of Watcher energy, causing enemies within 8 meters of you to become fear for 3 seconds. You also gain 34 weapon and spell damage for each. Oh, this is pretty nice. I like this set, because you're breaking free a lot in PvP land, so this might not be a bad set that um, you get in PvP. I the clap to you, Sauce. This is actually like it's it's interesting. I like this set. It's a nice set. Then you have the emulator char. Adds 40 like adds 1487 armor, max health. When you take damage while below 50%, you gain immunity to immobilization, snares, and crowd control for 10 seconds. Ah, but it can only occur every 40 seconds. That's rough right there. That 40 second, that's rough. I could see that being rough. So this is a meh. And then you have the Glorgalop, the Destroyer. You get max health while in combat. Each second you stand still grants you a stack of Flesh Fortress up to 10 stacks. Each stack increases your armor by 380 and your critical resistance. Each second you move removes a stack of Flesh Fortress. Exiting combat removes all stacks. Using charge and teleport abilities do not remove stacks. That's pretty cool. So if you're charging or teleporting to somebody, it does not remove the stacks. But if you stand still, eh, this is a nice set for, for tanks, for tanky builds in PvP land. That's pretty nice. I like that. And here we have some random things that, uh, you know, I just uh, put in some random stuff. You can now deposit the outfit style pages in your back. Finally. So all those style pages you got into these little events, instead of dropping them in your gift bank, you can now store them in your actual bank. Oh my god, do you know how many like how many of these style pages I've destroyed? It, it's it's pretty nasty. But anyway the major gallop is currently applying to toy mounts. So you, those little toy mounts, yeah, they have major gallop and it's absolutely hilarious. But unfortunately, 
they're not intending for that. So they might actually fix that in PTS. Now, this is something cool that I looked and I was like, hell yeah. Master request assistance. Beginning with this update, your master request will point you towards a set crafting station to use to complete that quest. So basically, if you pop a master writ, for example, of Hunting's Rage, it's going to show you the Hunting's Rage location and that you know you're looking at. Now, this is the best. If you're in a house, it's going to place a quest pin over the needed crafting station when you are in close proximity. So when you're navigating from your house, like in the houses, you're going to have a little pin that says, hey, this is the crafting station. At present, this applies to all set crafting stations in player houses and some set crafting stations found in the world. The remaining in-world set crafting stations will be added in a future patch. So that's I, I just thought that was pretty cool, um, mainly for the housing crafting. So there you go. We will have endeavors. These are account-wide limited time activities that reward a new currency. Um, they can be used to purchase any item from currently active crown crate. So if you uh, want those apex mounts, you're gonna be able to do it. Now, a lot of people have said that they're probably not gonna give you a ton of the currency, I guess, to do it. Um, so that's, that's gonna be interesting and how many of the currency you're gonna be able to get. So we don't know that yet. I guess we'll find out in the next upcoming weeks. But you have to complete a task such as killing a number of creatures, crafting a number of items from a specific trade skill, and they can be found in the group and activity finder. When you log in the first time, they are granted to you automatically. So endeavors come in two groups, daily and weekly, and then the UI will be indicate which endeavor is available, as well as how many you can complete in that group. The reaching the number will lock out of the completion of the other endeavors for that group. So you can only do a certain amount per week and per day. Um, you're going to have ability bar timers. So the action duration reminder is a new setting that has been added to the combat settings menu. So when you're when it's enabled, using an ability will display a timer over that ability's icon corresponding to the duration of its effects. This includes abilities cast on enemies as well as friendly targets. You can also enable timers for the back bar, which will display smaller timers for the for abilities on the ability bar that isn't currently active. This is actually pretty awesome. I like this add-on in PC, and I think this is one of the best things that, you know, as, as a game, Sauce can do for the console players because the PC players already have this. Um, this isn't really needed, so this is pretty cool. Now we're going to have new homes. We have Pilgrim's Rest, we have Water's Edge, and Patterfang Chapel. So those, um, you know, the, the chapel allows use of the Pledge of Mara. That's pretty cool. So the embattled clergy of the Quenjing Grail established Patterfang Chapel in the first era of Bastion of Faith. Part cathedral, part citadel. That I might actually get to, <clears throat> to do this. And um, the water's edge, they'll see in the taste of river life without all the flooding. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Uh, it's a cozy bridge home with both the Outlaw's Refuge and Leowin Castle, just a brief walk away. That's interesting. So you can go to the Outlaw's Refuge. Um, this in-house, this house is available in-game for gold after unlocking the Blackwood Grind Adventure Achievement. And it's also available for purchase in the Crown Store. That's pretty nice. Um, now, Pilgrim's Rest. This is, this is an inn room that you can complete with a room to spare. So this is just a regular inn. Uh, can be purchased for 3,000 gold. So that's pretty cool. I like the chapel and that it allows you to use the Pledge of Mara. That's pretty awesome. Now, <laughs> these are some of the things that are bad. Um, sorry, I left the bad things to the end. The Necromancer, the Boneyard, um, it only lasts 10 seconds instead of 10 and a half. And the synergy, um, now he has the synergy activator rather than the caster. The death nail reduce the amount of crit chance granted from this passage from to 2%, 4% from 
the Grave Lord ability slotted down from 5 to 10. I don't think this is going to stick, but if it does, Necros, I'm sorry, you're getting nerfed. You're getting nerfed pretty bad. So there it is. I don't think it's going to stick. I think it's going to be, um, they're going to, they're going to nerf the crit chance, but it's not going to be this high of a nerf. Um, if it is, I mean, we just have to live with it, but I think people are going to start saying something about this. Now the night blade, the dark cloak had their reduced the healing from this morph by approximately 5%. I was talking to pillow and he says that this is not that big of a nerf, but it's still a nerf. So their cloak and portals of VCR, eh, not going to be, um, you know, it's, it's still going to be used, but just it's going to have a 5% less reduced healing. Now, the Templar, the Luminous Charts now restores full resources for the Magicka and Stamina granted rather than half of the offstat granted. So that's pretty cool. This is actually a buff from the Templar. Um, they're trying to make the Templar tank viable and... The Templar tank was viable a while, like these, this was years ago. And the reason they kind of went away from that is because people in PvP were doing dirty, dirty, dirty things. And I have a feeling that people in PvP are going to be doing dirty, dirty, dirty things again. Now, Templar tanks are still a thing right now, but they're just not as good as a DK, Warden, Necro, whatever. So <clears throat> I think you're going to see a little bit of a, if this sticks, you're going to see more Templar tanks trying to come out of the woodworks. And I mean, this is a nice change. Um, we also might get some, uh, you know, I, I guess we might get some, um, some, I don't know, some healers using this too. Uh, so, Blade Cloak. Deadly Cloak. This ability now deals double damage instead of doubling the tick rate. This will result in a 9% damage increase, but will require you to stick to your target more and have less of a chance to proc other effects. The Necrotic Orbs. This morph uh, now takes once every second rather than half a second. This is definitely a nerf. Um, increased damage per tick disability by approximately 16%. So it is a nerf. They are increasing the tick, um, decrease the travel speed, so it's easier to land multiple ticks on low mobility enemies. And this will be an overall DPS loss, getting these abilities closer to other AoE dots in power. Note these will still be stronger than most other dots due to having a higher variance of performance. But uh, yeah. Uh, fix an issue where the AoE size and synergy and this morph for 7 meters instead of 8. So increase the healing per tick of this morph by 38%. This will result in less total healing overall, but will be stronger than most other AoE heals. So, eh, that's pretty nice. Um, I just realized I have 35 on the last page too. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. This is some of the things that I saw on PTS, and hopefully... You guys will, you know, get the patch notes and kind of see what's going on there. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day.